scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14 is found in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 40 that all things be done decently and in order. So Paul was creating an apostolic system to coordinate the operation of the gifts so that it will edify the body and then not destroy the people but he never taught us that there were nine gifts the classification was just a theological guide to help the people the gifts of the spirit are as vast as his person there are dimensions you will see operating that you may not exactly find it in the bible there and if you do not have this understanding you can reject it in a bid to not come under the influence of his spirit of course theologically speaking we can agree that there are nine gifts as revealed from scripture but when you walk with god you will find out that there are operations there are administrations and there are diversities so paul told us that the interpretation of tongues i will run very quickly that's where we stopped the interpretation of tongues is the ability to translate divine utterances into an earthly recognizable language for the purpose of reception and edification the ability to translate divine utterances the ability to translate divine utterances into an earthly recognizable language for the purpose of reception and edification it was paul in first corinthians chapter 13 who taught he said though i speak with tongues of men and tongues of angels so he lets us know that there are languages the word tongue is an ancient english word for language there are languages that are given to men Igbo, yoruba hausa you know and all of that but there are languages of angels they, they are heavenly communications that are out of the scope of the natural man and there are times that god grants people access to communicate these languages are we together that's what the bible calls the gift of diverse kinds of tongues we settled that already that the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is not the same as the gift of tongues as a prayer language no the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is prophecy in a heavenly language in an unknown language a spiritual communication that is prophetic in nature to the body god speaking to people through a vessel in a language that is not known by the communicator and this gift the interpretation of tongues must come upon the same communicator or another person to translate it into an earthly language so that the people can say amen let it come we receive we believe we receive we release our faith this has happened to many of us while we pray it's just because it sounds like your tongues for prayer so you will not know the difference but when you begin to grow to be spiritual you will get to a point where when you are praying you know that this is not your prayer language of tongues again this is an intercourse happening between you and the spirit it's a language many times you will find yourself interpreting it by yourself like prophecy or you will find somebody who is not even connected to your prayer shouting your answer somewhere on the floor while you are there praying someone is rolling near a roof or a door somewhere prophesying your answer are we together kenneth e hagen 
walked very lavishly in all the nine gifts as we know and many times in his meeting he walked very strongly much more than any man of god i know in the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues you watch his materials and you see him many times prophesying in fact he was so meticulous in his communication there are times that he would talk and stop himself you say no this is not consistent with the spirit of god rebuke himself and start again look for another tongues the gift of interpretation of tongues it is needed there are communications let me tell you the truth there are many things god has been telling us but we do not sustain this gift that's why we do not understand the bible says he that hath an ear let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches that means the spirit is speaking but his system of communication among others is the ability to grant you access to revelations through a coded language that is heavenly we see an example of that in the days of belshazzar the bible says while they were celebrating in the temple with the vessels that they captured from the house of god all of a sudden a finger wrote on the wall mene mene tekel ufesen it was a language that was not known they used divination astrology they could not figure it out and when daniel came he looked at it and then he sustained this ability now he didn't know that this was a, the gift of the spirit did not start working in the new testament they were coordinated and theologically explained in the new testament the gift of the spirit have been as long as human vessels gave god room to manifest so daniel came and by this gift he said he looked at it and said mene mene oh king this is what god is saying whether they understood or not god will still punish the king for sure he was just informing them oh king you have been weighed in a balance and you have been found wanting this day your kingdom is taken from you that was the speakings of god but it took a man who had this understanding to communicate it the next gift quickly prophecy prophecy first corinthians chapter first corinthians let me open there so that i'll be sure that fourteen now first corinthians fourteen there's one verse okay verse three first corinthians fourteen and verse three paul still speaking he said but he that prophesieth speaketh on speaketh unto men to what edification and exhaustion and comfort he that prophesies he that prophesies speaks to men your prophecy should do three things number one edification building exhortation and then comfort what is prophecy the supernatural ability to reveal events informations the supernatural ability to reveal events and information prophecy is always futuristic in context except where it is a declaration of the word of god over a situation the manifestation of prophecy the character of the prophetic is such that the communications are of things that have not physically manifested yet are we together now when it is past and present that's the word of knowledge the gift of the word of knowledge oh pastor alpha this happened today this is what god is doing now that's word of knowledge this is what god is going to do tomorrow by this time tomorrow that was not word of knowledge that was prophecy are we together now now let me tell you this every prophet everybody called into the prophetic office must have this gift at work in him but not everybody manifesting the gift of prophecy is a prophet are we together here is the confusion the fact that i'm seeing things and saying things does not mean i am i can be called into the prophetic office for a long time and never see anything and never foretell yet i am a prophet an example enoch was a prophet 
there's not much we see about enoch's prophecy john the baptist was not just a prophet the greatest of all the prophets until christ yet he did very little of revelation there are very few times we just see him acknowledging and say behold the lamb of god who takes the sin of the world and said the one who trained me in the wilderness told me the one upon whom i see the spirit descending not much was said in terms of you know prophecy to nations like jeremiah and the rest are we together prophecy is a very powerful gift now i know that there has been an abuse of the prophetic you know like um i don't know who was sharing testimony here there are marriages that have broken because of prophets and prophecies there are individuals whose lives have been destroyed because of prophecy and all of that there are people who were doing well until a prophetic word came into their lives is that true they made them leave their wives leave their husband give away their children sell their property give their car and all kinds of things there must be a balance in the communication of the prophetic now i don't have time to now tell you the history of the prophetic in nigeria and africa specifically but i just want you to know something about prophecy everybody listen prophecy is very important for the end time now it is true that there are imbalances it is true that there is a lot of falsehood there are people who have developed such a resentment for prophecy justifiable re resentment because of the way it has been misused and has been merchandised people have extracted money from people in the name of the lord people have forced people into marriages that are not the will of god because of all kinds of hilarious visions and dreams that came from everybody match make people into doom just because of this you see that the bible tells us certain things about prophecy we must take note of number one is that we see in part and we prophesy in part this is a very big revelation the most accurate of all of us still sees in part and prophesies in part number two the word of god has given to us the bible calls it a more sure word more dependable more reliable meaning if i never have an individual speak a prophetic word over my life and i can have access to the word the word of god will carry out that prophetic ministry over my life this is very important number three this the prophetic is the office with the highest propensity of falsehood you hardly hear false apostles you hardly hear false evangelists you hardly hear false teachers false pastors but you hear in the bible repeated false prophets again and again and again because of the inclination with the realm of the spirit the realm of the spirit is a is a realm like the physical realm the realm of the spirit is not heaven that you are open to the realm of the spirit does not mean you are open to heaven any spirit that can access the realm of the spirit has an advantage over this realm including that of a herbalist so that someone is communicating a, a divine information that is out of the scope of the physical realm does not mean it is of god this should not create cynicism that's why every true manifestation of prophecy must be within the boundaries of the word of god are we together watch this come pastor alpha if I stand and God opens my eyes please listen or the Holy Spirit speaks to me or I have a vision prophetic now and I see Pastor Alpha having an accident are we together now or in my vision for instance I see Pastor Alpha beating his lovely wife now you see I have received that my renewal is what will be responsible for the way to be transferred I judge what I see and I know that it is not consistent with the character of God are we together now my understanding the word of God and understanding the nature of God will be the template I will use in interpreting that prophecy you don't expect me to look and say pastor alpha and Awao, so this is how you are beating your wife no 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 automatically I know that God is revealing to me the plot of the enemy over his life so the nature of my speaking to him 
will be such that this is what the devil wants to do but then victory i don't have to see victory it is part of being a word addict to prophesy the victory and say i see it but this addition is consistent with the word of god if all i say is madam next week you are going to receive a beating from your husband if it does not happen i'm not a man of god you see i may have seen correctly but my lack of understanding the word of god has misinterpreted it and by so doing you have misrepresented god over this situation am i fake no am i renewed no and it's misrepresenting god every manifestation of the prophetic must be with a very thorough understanding of not just the word of god but the character of god what god can do and what god cannot do are we together now yes there are things i will see about pastor alpha i will not even need to tell him you see that my understanding of god is and my knowledge of god and the gravity of what i have seen is such that if i tell pastor alpha the nature of what i've told him will occupy his mind and put fear and so i judge what i'm about to say on the strength of certain things god has not given us the spirit of fear but of love of power and of a sound mind number two philippians 4 verse 8 says finally brethren whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are true my introducing that word has a propensity to corrupting his work with god so i will reserve that prophecy and intercede for him if in the place of intercession the holy spirit beckons on me to still reveal to him then i can come and reveal to him in such a way that i exalt the power of god above that situation interpretation interpretation is as dangerous wrong interpretation is as dangerous as error and lies listen I can be here right now are, are you are you getting blessed i can be seated here right now and all of a sudden god will open my eyes watch this i can see a jimmy in a vision and see pastor alpha's wife and then see two of them holding a child did i see correctly yes now you look at this complicated vision i i coined a vision like this for on purpose now what is this mystery i'm seeing a jimmy is married with his wife and his children now i'm seeing a jimmy standing pastor alpha's wife standing and they are holding a child let me tell you what a very foolish man of god will do you will bring that thing like that with the heat that it came with from the realm of the spirit and tell a jimmy's wife i say hey, madam just many things are happening that's what i what are you doing you are destroying someone's marriage it's not consistent with the will of god are we seeing now you are planting distrust between pastor alpha and his wife are we together now when you see a thing like that your first assignment is to be able to judge by the operation of the word what mean at these things it could be similarity in visions it could mean similarity in operation that there is a gift that baby being a representation of a dimension of the spirit that is being birthed that is similar to a jimmy and the wife are you seeing that now but because you have not taken out time to judge you just say everything and destroy people's lives another example let me have a lady come my dear my come let's assume that these people are a wonderful couple husband and wife are we together they came for koinonia and now let's assume i'm a foolish man of god and i have seen this kind of thing watch this i'm not i'm not being cynical you know that i love the body of christ and all i'm just trying to give us understanding because this is a very serious thing it has destroyed people's lives now this is husband and wife do you know watch this god can open my eyes and i can look at this lady in the spirit and see how it haunts yes the nature of spiritual interpretation is such that you see the realm of the spirit you know how you watch cartoon or some of these scientific movies that's how the realm of the spirit really works i can look and see this woman with horns and just tap the husband and say oh god you mean how long did you say you have been with this woman and i just clap my hands and i say that you arrived here and this woman didn't kill you the innocent woman is standing and saying 
I love this man with all my heart. What is this nonsense you are saying? Are you seeing now? Now, the man of God truly saw a horn. And he's saying, I know what I saw. This woman is a witch. Oga, your whole business and your life has not been working. And it is true. Your life has not been working. But because this person does not understand the character and the operation of the kingdom, his interpretation is faulty. Are we together now? And then I now tell him, Mr. Man, the best thing to do is to do what Abraham did to Hagar. Are we together? Now, I would justify that because that story is in the Bible. I told you that the Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it preach anything you want. That it is in the Bible does not mean it is of God. The part in the Bible that resonates with God's character is the word of God. Are we together now? So I look at this. What God may be revealing to me, listen, is that there is a problem. It is true that there may be a problem in this woman's life. It could be hereditary. It could be an operation of darkness that Satan is trying to bring. It may not even have anything to do with her directly. That has an effect on his marriage. But because I do not understand it, I destroy this dear lady's life embarrass her in the presence of everybody a business partner let's assume she's doing poultry a business partner that wants to make order of 500 chickens will cancel that thing after that prayer why will you want a witch to to bring chickens for you so that you're, you're, you you understand that kind of thing it's not easy to be a witch let me tell you this let me tell you this listen 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 don't go and study occultism but let me be honest with you the condition to be a witch this witch that we talk about and with witchcraft and wizardry in its in its most acute form is not something a human being can just become like that the condition to be a witch is the condition to receive the mark of the beast please help the person under the anointing so this dear lady now imagine that she's your choir mistress and you are a choir member will you listen to her again when you went for the program and you saw what happened and the worst part of it is if i now touch her and she falls down ah that's it that's the final proof that this woman is a, and then the devil now starts using her face to oppress members are you seeing now just like some of you see the faces of innocent people and get up and hate them for nothing and the devil plays with your not understanding the word of God. It's a rightly dividing the word. Jesus looks at Peter. Watch this. Peter just finished confessing that he was the son of God. And then Peter talks to Jesus. No, 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 no. Will you go to the cross? And he looks at him and says, Get thee behind me, Satan. And Peter is looking at him. And Jesus understood that if he left Peter like that, Peter may not have been an apostle. Peter would have been depressed to death. After three years of working with you, you call me a devil and say, no, 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 Peter, let me explain to you. That's what every man of God should do. Now that you have rebuked because of your spirit, intelligence must come in. He said, Satan desired to sift you. Satan and you are two different people. Desire to sift you like wheat. All that shout was not hatred for you. I have prayed for you that your faith fail not. And when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. Are you seeing that now? That's why you can see people manifest. Sometimes they are manifesting, receiving impartations. Other times they are manifesting and demons and, and all of that. We thank God for that spiritual intelligence here that's why people can get up manifesting and not feel bad and not feel like the whole world is against them are we together now thank you god bless you prophecy must submit to the word of god for it to be accurate when prophecy becomes emotional when it becomes cultural when it becomes just a raw delivery of everything seen in the realm of the spirit it becomes a weapon of mass destruction the purpose of prophecy is for edification for exhaustion exhortation 
and for comfort prophecy does not condemn prophecy does not destroy even when god spoke to the prophets in the old testament he would always tell them what to do Nineveh, i'm about to destroy you people and this is what will happen however they declared a fast and the mercy of god came in remember the bible says the lord is full of grace the lord is gracious and compassionate right full of love i mean how did he put it now um rich in love the lord is merciful and compassionate he's rich in love his mercies are new every morning those of us here who are seeing visions having dreams document these things and seek guidance first especially when you are beginning to walk in the gifts of the spirit be careful don't authoritatively go and meet people they have a lot of respect for you and they will listen to everything i am careful when i speak to people because even when i joke they don't take it lightly i can be joking with somebody and say ah god bless you and the person wants to kneel down and i'm saying i'm a human being this is not anointing i'm joking just joking with you and you see the thing about the anointing is every time there is a demand whether you are joking or not that person can now fall down now embarrass me there and make it look as if you know i hardly have people to play with it's a very this this anointing sometimes is a very your life can be very very lonely someone sees you are trying to smile and the person is already believing that maybe it's, it's a word from god i am a human being jesus ate corn in the farm on sunday remember jesus was with a woman and they were talking i mean please and i think some of us is some of us men of god that make this happen you know the way we spiritualize it and make it look as if you are in the spirit every time it's a lie it's a lie it's a lie bible say walking in the spirit yes but it's not in the character of you can't smile you can't do anything you feel bad if if i am angry and i slap david dam's head I should just say sorry i shouldn't make it look as if it's the holy spirit that made me do it no this is i'm a human being i was carried away i got emotional and touched his head i'm a human being jesus was angry did he say it was the holy spirit who made him angry no prophecy but we need it now the last thing i'll say about prophecy before we move on is the fact that you must never resent it the resentment we have for prophecy we have mixed the baby and the bad water and thrown it away there are two dimensions of prophecy there is the revelatory dimension of prophecy there is the creative dimension of prophecy the revelatory dimension has to do with insight and information about people situations nations like jeremiah the creative dimension of prophecy is when you have the word of god alongside the grace for performance when the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not revealing he was creating are we together now we must desire it the church that rejects the prophetic is going to be in trouble prophecy is very important a man's life can change overnight because of prophecy we have there are many of us if only we embrace the ministry of prophecy we would have left this realm left the current dimensions that we are, we are in but we've been grounded because of a cynicism the moment you see someone saying the lord is ah please all you this stupid especially if he's a young man that's why they see everybody they mix join all of us together and just throw all of us and make it look as if we're all demons no no hallelujah nothing happens in the earth realm until prophecy announces it nothing happens in the earth realm until prophecy announces it nothing happens in the earth realm until prophecy announces it prophecy is not just a revelation it's an authorization for spiritual things to find expression all through scripture you see angels bringing messages and heralding them before those occurrences begin to happen let's go to the next gift faith there is the law of faith 
an operation of faith there is the spirit of faith there is the gift of faith what is the gift of faith an unusual ability to believe God an unusual ability to believe God that is higher and greater than your current world level higher and greater than your level of spiritual exposure there are times because you see generally speaking your faith level is proportionate to the level of the word of god that is in you your level of understanding of scripture and the ways of god is commensurate to your faith there are certain challenging situations in your life in leadership there are times that you need to bring certain realities from the realm of the spirit that is higher and bigger than your personal work with god at that point you don't just need the law of faith you need the gift of faith the gift of faith is always short-lived because under that influence of the gift of faith anything uttered will come to pass it is the reason why god does not leave people to work with it for a long time because our own renewedness will destroy people's lives the gift of faith is the operation of the faith of God, not faith in God. The very faith of God working in a human vessel. The faith that created the heavens and the earth, not the word of God. The very faith of God, an impartation of that faith to help you command realities that otherwise will not come. That's why the gift of faith works peri -passu with the working of miracles there are certain situations that are challenging higher than you do not even understand the dynamics of that result as it is but the gift of faith comes upon you the character of the gift of faith is unusual courage and audacity unusual courage it has happened to many of us in the place of prayer fear takes you to the place of prayer and you are praying and prophesying praying and all of a sudden an ability comes upon you and you begin to speak and say audacious things not even caring who is listening later when you hear what you say even you you are embarrassed by it it's a sign that you are not the one who said it i decree and declare in the name of jesus christ tomorrow by nine o'clock a helper is appearing and your neighbor is watching you say hey, hey, hey i just gave this guy one spaghetti and this that's not you because I, let me tell you how you know that's not you by 12 30 you will sit down and say hey, why did i now embarrass myself you call it an embarrassment because your your original faith level has returned now and you are seeing that that faith level cannot accommodate that level of miracle but god had to move through you and truly you will see that a miracle will happen that's why you give him glory when it happens when they say man of god you quickly turn and say god is you one of the hallmark of the apostolic ministry is the gift of faith the gift of faith daring things by the gift that's why those who are called in the apostolic ministry if they don't allow the holy spirit work on them usually they are very very arrogant very outspoken sometimes very sarcastic it's a side effect that comes with the office your intimacy with the holy spirit is a secret to correcting it so that i work in an apostolic office and i am arrogant and sarcastic and outspoken and some of these wrong things i may say it is how it is no your work with the holy spirit was designed to correct it it's like you are cooking in the kitchen the moment you put i i don't i don't have any business with the kitchen but i'm just saying what i remember i know that when you put palm oil in a hot pot what happens there's a side effect the whole kitchen and maybe the neighboring environment it can be choking does that mean you should stop the cooking people are hungry they are waiting for the meal but then you have to create a way of managing it so most times before women will start they will do it outside or they will open the window in advance that's how you work you must create a system with god to cover for the side effect that that operation comes you don't choke people and say you are you are boiling palm oil no if i keep insulting pastor alpha stupid you are crazy you are you are you are, you are a stupid person and then i say it is the anointing no it is not the anointing it is the effect of the anointing 
um, yes, but then the unrenewed part of me mixing with the anointing is what produces that outcome. It can be corrected. Hallelujah. That's why when Paul finished giving us an exegesis of all the gifts of the Spirit, he said, I show you a more excellent way. A more excellent way of administering the gifts that if they do not work by love, you are not operating the more excellent way. Are we together? Every one of us here will require this gift if you must get results in your life. A day will come when your faith level cannot take the kind of miracles you need. The urgency around it will require the gift of faith. There are times you see during the miracle service, I'm just walking and looking at people and I know that, ah, this situation is very challenging. Sometimes the people are waiting for me to come, please help that person under the anointing. And then the person can just whisper, sorry sir, I have HIV and this HIV self is not just me, me, my wife and my child. You don't have to tell everybody, now you are standing there. Or someone is saying he has tuberculosis and is coughing in in your coffee before your face and you are inhaling the thing if this thing is not working in you you do this for five years the probability of catching tuberculosis is 100 percent 100 percent that's why we tell people to work with god before they begin to move in certain levels of ministry it's not pride you will if i've been faking this thing by now you will see it it would destroy you one day because you are laying hands on people it's not this laying on of hands is not something you do just because you are anointed that's why sometimes you see me pray for these people before we allow them to go it's not it's not some man of god thing you are contending spirits you can carry problems you have no business carrying leave someone land upon your life you finish that service you go back have you not seen people who minister to the sick and what was on them the person went back to sleep um, one leg did not he didn't he could not lift one leg again that boomerang effect I believe in the gift of faith let me submit to you that where God has brought us by his grace in this ministry is an operation of the gift of faith there was a year let me tell you a little story there was a year when early that year before koinonia will start god gave an instruction that we should carry every one naira in this ministry and sow it as a seed one week to koinonia resuming i can't remember which of the years was that everything i said god everything now let me tell you, you better make sure that that gift is working in your life because that's suicidal not that you should carry a sizable seed and go and give empty everything close everything and i did it foolishly and stupidly i submit to you in less than seven days more than ten times that amount return it's faith you need it some of us right now you wrote your exams humanly speaking you are not going to graduate one you wrote nonsense two you didn't finish you need the gift of faith you need the gift of faith are we together yes there are wicked supervisors ready to make sure they frustrate you how about getting a job you keep carrying your certificate to everybody say sorry we don't need what you studied and at a point you feel bad and say is it my fault that i studied this one day while you are praying the gift of faith comes on you and you make declarations by the spirit all of a sudden someone calls you you need it it is given to help believers our families many of us our families are in a mess we need the operation of this gift to correct things you see that lady that testified that was what was working in her the dear lady that said she went home gather your relatives what if it doesn't work do you know what it, you can be stupid by yourself but to gather relatives who are not born again and then it doesn't work Abba. the gift of faith when you have plan b it is your faith when there is no plan b it is the gift of if i perish that's what was on esther 
when she was on her way going to meet Ahasuerus the destiny of the nation of Israel was at stake and she entered if I perish ask her to say it after that time she won't be able to say it again hallelujah that was the grace that was at work in Moses when Moses went before God he said why are you crying to me Moses said what is all this two million people are shouting these guys are going to kill me you don't know how hard how how hard hardened and hearted they are and God says go and and part the rivers theologically historically speaking um historians tell us that it's not like the river parted and they told people now walk do you know the miracles that happened there even if the river parted there's going to be space on the ground are you going to jump down won't you die so the ground had to lift and come up to where they were for them to be able to walk through it and moses took his rod stood before two point something million people and said people the egyptians you see today that's the spirit of faith i speak to someone or oh, the egyptians you see today in the name of jesus christ after this meeting you will see them no more forever I say it again the Egyptians you see today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ whose faith is at work here you will see them no more after today please sit down the gift of faith a man of God true story many of you will know him pastor Korede Komaya um, I think it was Bishop Aremu's wife Bishop Aremu's wife, she, she, you know, they have twins, and she was sitting with the man's wife and then looked at him and said, Ah, you said, How many children do you have? And she, I think she had just maybe one or two then. And she looked at her and carried her, uh, what is this, this thing, ladies' tie, their head tie, and threw it on her and said, Take twins, Joe. That was it. The woman got pregnant, twins gave birth. That's not guess that's not guess when you see it happen sometimes i see it happen i'm surprised somebody can come and while he's talking and giving every long explanation apostle this is happening it's like prophecy i don't even know when it comes out of my mouth i just say it is done go and you see the person living disappointed you didn't even wait for me to finish i struggled i joined the line i humbled myself what is all this let me express and then the person goes back and things change the gift of faith is powerful are we blessed the gift of healing Jesus I wish I had time to dwell on this maybe we'll take another series next year what is notice that the Bible does not say the gift of healing it said the gift G I F T S the gifts of healing what is it the ability to bring physical and emotional healing to people the ability to supernaturally bring physical and emotional healing you know years ago i really used to laugh at white people when i see all of them every little thing they cry every little thing they cry how did you get here and she's trying to explain just that there was a delay with taxi and then she starts crying they give her a hunger like, what sort of human beings are this i mean just anything makes them cry men women but as i grew in leadership I found out that emotional brokenness is worse than physical sickness the Bible says a broken spirit dried the bones there is a way a man can be emotionally devastated and die not by any physical sickness are we together emotional wounds are created because of words and circumstances they are more hurtful if i slap you and the sign of my hand is on your face it won't reach two days that thing will disappear correct but if i speak something negative about your life you can hold that word for 10 years and it will not leave you is that true the same thing how many of you have seen people with diabetes and you see an injury that will not heal it looks like it will not and that's exactly what happens to the spirits of people hence the ministry of people like joyce mayer and all of this you can look at them and feel ah no falling down no shouting i tell you the truth they are doing a major healing ministry 95 percent of africans before age 15 have been raped by wicked words 
from the ones who called you stupid to the one who called you idiot to your teacher who said you will have a big head you are dull to the mistakes you made to the fact that you were the oldest person in your class baba class four you don't know those things were affecting you a broken spirit you get to school and everybody's harassing you people look at you and say i hope you know you're a very ugly lady i'm sorry i have to just tell you my mind and the person thinks he's being bold those that accumulation demon spirits find a safe haven in that mindset and it destroys you and you find out anything god tells you you just look at him and say god use somebody those kinds of words are reflections of emotions that have been broken that's why worship like this creates that kind of healing you can raise a song and while everybody is laughing only one person is crying that person is getting healed at the end of it is like you know how you bath someone just feels light feels i have been healed from this i have counseled people and i am amazed at the things people go through and yet they still smile and walk there are people if they give you half of the emotional load on their head it will kill you instantly yet they are carrying it and saying hallelujah praise the lord ah the bible says rejoice not over me my enemies there are many of our parents when they lost their last job they never got another one again do you know why because the way they disgraced them and drove them out of that company it was so embarrassing and they said i can't i can't do this to myself again sir but you're a phd holder no i rather remain poor after 10 years how about those who but please don't feel bad those who marriage did not work for have you seen people like that and after 20 years you tell them it's okay now i think you can get back i know okay maybe your wife died or something happened and they tell you look the memory is still as fresh as yesterday have you seen people say i will never forgive you till jesus comes that's what emotional devastation can do there are people here as i'm talking god is healing you from this because let me tell you it's a luggage oh i was raped when i was two years i was raped when i was five years the house boy that worked for us raped me some of us were raped by our own parents sadly are we together and you grow and those things are still in your mind i can never make it you wrote wire 10 times jam 11 times there is no understanding of favor so every time we say god is favoring people you don't look and say is it me you are talking to no. healing if you are not healed and god ever gives you an opportunity to be a leader you will judge everything from the template of your emotional wounds if someone laughs at you you say why are you laughing at me because you remember that that's how they laughed at you to mock you the person was laughing rejoicing with you but your cynicism you see that your wife just looks and says, ah my husband my husband and say please i don't like disrespect I say, ah, my husband again i've told you this is how my mother did this is uh, must everybody know i'm the last one it's not about that situation there is something that has created a wound in you are we together there are some of you they use all kinds of words you had nicknames ugly nicknames and cliches some of you used to urinate in secondary school or primary school although you were it was a situation that required prayer and the adults there did not have spiritual intelligence to help and this i remember that time they will gather the person who is easy himself and sing songs and dance dance around dance and the person who the person who stand like this with your bed sheet that you who urinated what a way of destroying people don't ever do that to anybody how about brothers that blast ladies you are not fine you are not this and they say i i i, I gave it to her well, how about the ladies that blast a guy she blasted him in 99 till now he has not approached any lady every time he wants to go that wound god is bringing deliverance in the name of jesus christ But there is a physical healing 
there is the physical healing the healing ministry is needed more than ever before i was listening to benny Hinn not too long before i came and you know i hear him read these healing scriptures and i am touched we need to bring the healing power of god back to the church i tell you this there's too much there is very little of genuine healing not everybody's in a wheelchair but let me tell you there are people who need physical healing physical healing how god acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power and the bible says he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed healing oppressed healing oppressed every sickness is an oppression from headache to your hair falling to all of this i remember i think it was in mina or so when i saw a very touching miracle a gentleman that has never smelled anything in his life doesn't know how you put perfume he just looks at you you know what a bad way to live what of those who don't hear well what of those who don't see well all kinds of sicknesses the first time i would pray for a lady years ago and the lady told me she had no womb i don't mean something was wrong no womb anybody that doesn't believe in miracles don't argue with the person the day the doctor cannot help you i promise you you must believe i believe in the healing power of jesus or a robot will say this every day of his life i am called to bring the healing power of jesus to the nations he believed it are we together there are people here seated looking at me who have all kinds of things incurable diseases every time a medical predicament defies drugs and medical attention then there is a spirit behind it are we together now yes and let me say something about the gift of healing most people have been indoctrinated in the church to hate doctors and hate medicine i will never teach that you will never hear me teach that i believe in divine health i believe in all of this but day and night we're taking people to the hospital to take care of them we have lots of doctors here a few of them will be doctors by next week or week after next and all of that we we have a lot of our doctors yes you, you actually can clap i mean it's not all of them smiling already they will come and dance before god here to the shame of the devil so please don't get into this resentment i can't take drugs you are about dying just panadol will solve that problem now of course there are times that you stretch your faith if you stretch it and it doesn't seem to work take the panadol cure yourself and keep studying the word there is a realm of divine health i believe that are we together but we must never stigmatize people so you see people secretly buying drugs they buy malaria drugs they run and take injection for five days and come and hold the mic and say in the last 10 years i've not even taken paracetamol let's 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 be honest let's fear god jesus is called the great physician 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 say is there no balm in gilead praise god I believe in medicine and when you pray for people especially over a sensitive case don't stop them from taking their normal medication when they become healed medicine will confirm it are we together now especially for maybe HIV patients or people with some terminal diseases there are many pastors who have killed innocent people they prayed for the HIV patient for instance and said do you believe yes stop taking your antiretroviral drugs and the person was very fine but now after four or five months you find out that the person started emaciating and the person died when you pray for someone and it does not work please take the person to the hospital if you yourself are sick and you've prayed and prayed and nothing works you can still be declaring the word of god medicine is still a miracle you don't talk to the drug you swallow it the drug finds where your problem is the whole pharmacology behind that drug is a miracle so don't don't act as if 
you didn't tell the drug come to my ears you just swallowed it it's a miracle by God's grace we will never discourage people we have a first aid box as a ministry if someone collapses now under the anointing and all of that there is if he needs medical attention there are doctors here who will attend to him let's be responsible these are the things that try to make those who walk in power look like fools because we we keep killing people every day destroying people and not stopping you know stopping people from medical attention i don't do that tonight i believe that god is going to bring his healing power again to someone i believe in the ministry of healing i have been a victim of sickness so i know the relevance of healing i've shared with you my testimony when i had a fungal infection that ate my head pastor completely ate everything here you won't see one and it was just wounds everywhere i know the rejection that sickness brings i buy puff puff for people they won't collect it because my hand touched it even if i washed it in their presence can stigmatize you how about the woman with the issue of blood there are people living examples like that i remember praying for a lady who would bleed non-stop for sometimes like three or four months this lady can stand and be dizzy and just collapse like pass out we need to bring the healing power of god to people we need to let them see the power of god in their lives the devil is afflicting people with all kinds of sicknesses and tonight in the name of jesus is someone's night the last gift of the spirit and then we will pray the walking of miracles what is the walking of miracles the ability to bring about supernatural results supernatural occurrences that are above the laws of nature the ability to produce supernatural results above and beyond the laws of nature the working of miracle defies process there is no process with the working of miracles now life is a process but the working of miracles what happened in samaria was a working of miracles by this time tomorrow the economy of a nation will completely changed there are many of us who need miracles a healing is a miracle when it is instant when a healing is instant it's called a healing miracle miracles are not just limited to human bodies finances jesus performed that operation he said go and catch a fish open the mouth pick money out that's the working of miracles are we together now yes i believe in the working of miracles i've seen it happen in my life i've seen it happen in the ministry the multiplication of five loaf and two fish that was not just divine supply that was the working of miracles what of the the fish that they caught master we have toiled all night nevertheless at thy word and then he said cast your net to the right side and they caught so much fish they had to beckon on their partners what of ezekiel 37 restoration is a miracle bones that have gone and then the bible says something that always intrigues me when i read it it says bone was joined to its bone meaning no bone made a mistake every bone located the right one miracles someone is here and is in need of a miracle you are not sick in your body but there is a situation in your life that needs the intervention of god's hand if you go through the normal course of the law of process you may never be able to catch up restoration is one of those aspects in a man's life that requires the gift of the working of miracles and i will restore to you the years can years be restored i thought it's just material things that can be restored but god says no not with me when i can walk a miracle the bible talks about zion giving birth in one day that have you ever heard this he said as soon as zion 
travails she shall put forth her son let me tell you i want you to get ready for strange occurrences in your life things that will happen you will know that this is only god they will say but i know it took 10 years to build the house and you say my brother i was sitting down like this and a key came to me miracles the bible never said mary was pregnant for nine months no sir the angel never told mary according to the time of life it was never said that pregnancy was nine months miracles the nation of israel 430 years captivity in one night he said they chased them they didn't even allow their bread to rise they said please get out of this place are we together the lord has declared that this is a year of triumph let me tell you this i truly believe in restoration and i believe in speed pastor femi come pastor alpha come let me show you something very quickly and then we'll pray please stand here gentlemen just stand close to me watch this if pastor femi and pastor alpha are making progress in life this is them walking is that true and then something keeps pastor alpha down are you seeing pastor femi is moving forward now now pastor alpha start walking slowly this is progress not restoration restoration means he must be here because this was his original place now let me tell you what this miracle does it picks you and puts you so that if they check your life they cannot see where the delay was so when god says i will restore he didn't say i will release the force so that you make progress no sir there are many of us at your age there are things that should have happened what you need is not progress you need restoration restoration this gift of the spirit is a strange operation of the spirit where people's lives can change overnight overnight god can give speed oh god can bring his word to pass in people's lives he said rejoice not over me my enemies oh the fact that i lost my job and you are seeing me and my wife we are just moving around and i'm not eating anything you are laughing but the day this god arises in 24 hours 24 hours i've seen god do things in my life that has brought tears tears in my eyes i said god so this is what you can do some of you have never been surprised by god there is a way god will do something your first cry is not the miracle is how it happened god i've always heard that you can move like this but this one that you have done it to me no lord i fear you he said he does these things that men will fear him when he does it he signs his signature on your life i am god jabez was a man who was born in sorrow the mother cursed him because of the pain he caused her and jabez said oh that thou wouldest enlarge me god even if you release me to start moving forward now when will i make it let me tell you we need speed in nigeria everything is against a young man's establishment everything if you are a ministry you need this gift in your life otherwise you will be in trouble nobody will give you chair nobody will give you canopy nobody will give you money if you don't know how to command miracles please help that person under the anointing there by the power of God. there are situations tonight that need to hear the word of the lord god is a miracle walker God is a glorious God is God is I know you as a miracle walker in my life Lord God is a glorious just sing it one more time to build faith in your heart my God is He's a miracle walker Miracle walker God is Your glorious God One more time say God is He's a miracle walker 
from water. A glorious There is hope for a tree, even if it be cut. There is hope. There is hope. Apostle, at my age, I've not even gotten admission. My brother, there is hope. This God, in God's economy, one plus one is not two. Oh. One plus one is any answer he gives. Any answer. One plus one can be a car. What is the relationship between alphabets and car? The word of God. One plus one can be breakthrough. God can carry a man's lifetime achievement and give you in one month. Listen. This is not some get rich quick things. I don't encourage people to be irresponsible. But I'll be a stupid person to tell you I don't believe God can change people's lives overnight. Look at this ministry. Look at my life. Whoever told you God cannot arise for people. Listen. If you don't believe what I'm teaching you, you will struggle in your life as if God is not. The part of scripture you believe is the part that works for you. Are we together? Listen. If you are married and three years you've not had a child, or four years you have not had a child, if you have one child, that's a testimony, but that's not yet your portion. If you have twins, you have covered ground. That's restoration. Are you hear what I'm saying? If you graduated 2000 and let's say six, and by 2015 you cannot even rent a house if they give you a job with hundred thousand that's not yet your portion ah that's not your portion come on now how can that be your portion when somebody gets up and say i'm going abroad my house my car and the payment of the school fees i've left the lord say i should give you that's your portion now god is called the god of portions i know this about him righteousness and justice 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 she came to him and said avenge me my enemies the man neither feared god nor men but because she impersonated him listen let me tell you when i begin to pray and make demands over things in my life i don't spare I say, God, I'm not where I should be. Oh, I'm not where I should be. No, I'm moving forward. Thank you. But you said I will restore. You didn't say I will make progress. Are we together? Yes. That's how to pray. Lord, as a lady, I plan marrying 22. I'm 32. I can't just marry and continue. You are going to find a way of carrying me. Shabakatos. Lekota sabriata katoshiata. Hallelujah. Lord, I would have gotten a job in 2010. The man said I should sleep with him and get the job. But because of you, I refuse. Now it's 2017. I'm seven years. My payroll is seven years. Where is the window of heaven? I place that demand. And brothers and sisters, you will see God do things that they will think you held a job. God that we serve the working of miracles God is truly a miracle worker I've seen him change people's lives I've seen him step into families this year God has done things in my life that brought tears in my eyes I said God what is this can you allow God use your life to reveal his name the names of God are a revelation of his possibilities. There are names you are just calling, but you have never really seen it. Listen, early this year, I taught on the gifts of men. That thing was not a message. It's a, it's a fearful dimension of God that God brought me into where men stand up to solve your problems as if you charm them there is a grace that makes that happen you will never listen there are some miracles that if they have not happened in your life you will never have time to serve god let's tell ourselves the truth
some of you have served god 10 years you are still begging for bread allow god to step in and do something for you you don't need you what you need is more than a job you need god to sign his name in your life how much is a job how much is hundred thousand you now have five children be honest will hundred thousand bless them when one child's monthly school fees is more than a hundred thousand you need the gift of the walking of miracles the wine finished in a feast the gift of miracles is a cure for embarrassment cure for embarrassment the wine finished and they went to him he said fill six pots alas master it was borrowed he needed the gift of miracles every time your life is in a point of embarrassment that's the gift you need that's the gift you need that's the gift you need i don't know how to make you believe this thing we are going to pray brothers and sisters before i begin to minister to us please i beg you listen listen i want you to be angry at your current level and say lord this is not what i agreed me and you this in the secret place i am not ungrateful but this is not our agreement by our agreement the level of grace i should be working in now your gift this is not the agreement lift your voice and pray bring forth your strong reasons the gifts of the spirit are the platforms to experience his possibilities you reign you reign hello hallelujah i have to stop here so that we can pray i'm supposed to teach you how to receive the gift but just leave it we'll take it another time we have to pray this thing i've said i'm angry in my spirit we have to pray there, there are doors that we must force to open now there are doors that we must force to open let me tell you listen listen if you keep following your life casually you will never get some breakthroughs he said right from the days of john the baptist and until now the kingdom of god suffered violence and the violence will take it by force lift your voice and open your mouth announce things that must happen this night lord you gave gifts to men hey. 
your majesty your majesty your majesty your majesty Your majesty, 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 your majesty. He said, I will walk a walk in your days that if you were told, you will not believe it. I will walk a walk. There is something I want to do in your life. There is something I want to do in your life, in your family. I'd like you to pray one minute. Lord, I believe you all. I believe you. I believe you. Don't let the devil tell you you're wasting your time. Blessed is she that believes. Blessed is she that believes. Visit my finances, oh God of heaven. Visit my family. hallelujah hallelujah listen I want us to pray no matter what has left your life call it back call it back lift your voice and pray whether it's money that left your life call it back joy call it back even God who quickened the dead and call it those things call it those things call it those things call it back sakata parato shekete those outside make sure you are praying those following online pray call it back by the spirit of faith by the gift of faith we call back opportunities we call back graces we call back mantles we call back dimensions
Alleluia. Alleluia. I want you to pray just before I pray for us. I'm releasing my faith with you. I don't know what God told you should have happened and you have not seen it. I'd like you to insist now and say, God, I've not forgotten. I bring you to remembrance. Early this year, you told me, Lord, you told me I will be laughing by October. I'm not yet laughing. I place a demand. I put pressure on your integrity. Lift your voice. Lift your voice. Place a demand. You said it. You can do it. You said it. You will make it happen. It is within your power. Shabakata praskana mato sebre gere gere mo. Ente ke te ke te ke te. Reke te koto shoto preketa. Leke ta paskata bara koto shobre. Hallelujah. 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 Listen. Listen. My Bible says, withhold not good to him that it is due when it is within your power to give. The Bible said it. Don't withhold good. He said, do not say unto him, come today, come tomorrow, where you can do it now. Say, Lord, now faith, now faith. I place a demand. Why wait tomorrow when it can happen now? It is within your power. It is within your power. Change my life now. I place a demand. Cry out for your finances. Cry out for your life. Abarato soto kabaradash. Lekata kata kata prasana balana balana bush. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I want you to believe God is giving people things as I'm talking. Listen, you won't cry forever. There is a God that is alive. I want you to believe this. I'm saying it, you won't cry forever. I come with an anointing in this place. I come with the anointing that follows this office. You won't cry forever. There is a God that is alive. 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 Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me a family before the end of August four people getting a job the end of October four one two three four I'm declaring it I'm declaring it it will happen to a family four people within two weeks a supernatural door that embargo of witchcraft is broken now that embargo of witchcraft is broken now I release the grace that makes this happen in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord is showing me someone. We may not have time to call, but you were saving up money to buy something i don't know if it's a car or land and god gave you an instruction to sow the money you sold the money and shared with somebody and the person insulted you and called you stupid and the lord is saying i'm seeing a date in the end november 21 the lord is saying between now and that time 
as surely as the Lord lives, He's giving you a strange miracle. A strange miracle. November 21. A strange miracle. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what has refused to produce in your life. There are some of us you are laboring, but the truth is nothing is working. There is a spirit of hardship. I told you, hardship is not poverty. Poverty is part of hardship. It's a subset of hardship. When that spirit comes, even if they make you a director, one million will not bless you. It's the spirit of hardship. You cannot exactly tell what you are doing with the money. You just know that every time there is a need you don't have, it's a spirit. What you need is not promotion. What you need is the blessing of the Lord to take away that thing. I'm speaking over someone's life. I don't know whose life has been like that, but in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power of the Holy Spirit, I decree and declare that embargo of hardship over your life leaves you now. It leaves you now. Now I'm stretching my hands. I'm praying for people. This speed, I want it to come on your life. There is a grace for speed. Ah, look, I'm seeing smoke just rising from the altar. Right down in the name of Jesus. I stretch my hands and I declare speed. Speed. Step into dimensions of accomplishment. Speed. Overflow one, overflow two, overflow three. Those outside, speed. The main goal here, speed. I command it now. Any area in your life where you have not been moving forward. Speed in the name of Jesus. I command speed. I command speed. I command speed. Receive it. I command speed. I don't care the way things have been. I'm speaking in speed to your business. Speed, speed is an anointing. Let it come on you now. Supernatural speed to your life. Speed. In the name of Jesus, I release speed. I release speed. I release speed. I release speed. Hear me. The Bible says, Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. There are people where you are, let me tell you, there, is, there are spirits keeping you there. Where you are is a mockery to yourself and to your God. In the name of Jesus, this fire that I see in the spirit, let it land on whoever must move forward now. Let it land on whoever must move forward now. I prophesy it in the name of Jesus. The Lord God whom I serve and whose I am, I command speed. I move your life to another dimension. To draw from you again. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.